Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm just saying. So, um, in the background, you're listening to Yolanda Adams. Um, yeah. Anyway. Reason, um, today, um, we did a, um, uh, street renaming for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who, um, who will be 50 years of his assassination, uh, on tomorrow. And, uh, as some of you may or may not know, I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and, um, Dr. King is one of my heroes, and um, I try to, I don't have a lot of heroes, um, my mom and my aunt, my grandmother, of course, but um, growing up in Birmingham during the Civil Rights Movement was can be quite traumatizing, so anything that has to do with Martin Luther King, sometimes it's very... Um, I'm very sensitive about it because of what I know as a child, what myself and my family and so many other uh, black Americans living in Birmingham at the time in the 60s during the civil rights movement. You know, our homes were burned, our neighborhoods were burned. My sister's friend Carol was killed in the 16th Street um, bombing of the church. And uh, although my sister was um, seven years uh, older than me, uh, she took care of my brother and I. My brother is 14 months younger than I am, and we went everywhere. They let us out of school and everything. So um, one of the sad things for me is that when um, you go to these big cities, um, a lot of the MLK uh, boulevards and streets or whatever are places where I heard one guy on Judge Mathis say, the way that you know how to find drugs is just by going to any big city that has a Martin Luther King Boulevard, Martin Luther King Street. Anything that had to do with Martin Luther King had black people living there, and most of them was drug infested and gang related stuff that was going on there. And it just really sad because that's not who he was. And I think sometimes, I hate to say it, but the powers that be, the Mr. Charlies, they are the ones who set it up that way. Well, you want your hero? There he is. He wasn't just a hero for us. He was for everyone, and he uh, tried to bring people together. And the thing about the South, as much as people want to talk about it, and a lot of people in the North don't even know what the South is, um, one thing about the South that I can remember is the unity of the Black people, the unity of Black Americans, and looking at people actually who look like you going to work, men, women, um, all going to work, even if it was just a picayune job like cleaning house or, um, you know, picking up garbage or what my father did, which was he worked for a, um, a beer company. I think it was Slitz or Schaefer. Um, and he delivered, um, you know, the, um, beer to the different stores in the neighborhoods. Um, we were segregated, but we did get to see a lot of our own people working because we supported each other because we were segregated. So of course, businesses um, were fine. We had the milkman who brought the milk to the door and the vegetable truck that used to come to our neighborhoods and you could buy your vegetables, the, you know, like they have good humor here that still goes on, but it was a different time. And um, I think that what we're doing now with the street naming here in the city that I live in, um, you know, it was long overdue, and I commend the person who was in the city council who tried to get it done, and I think it was 97 or something, several years ago, but they only put up one sign, and today they put up two. Um, well, they're putting it up along one whole street, so it'll be Martin Luther King Boulevard, which I commend them on that, and that's a wonderful thing. My problem is that sometimes um, Dr. King's legacy and what he stood for is being used by people who are not very nice people, and they use him and his name uh, for political, um, for their political aspirations and their political leverage. And for me, I think it's a travesty. I think it's horrible. And it rained all day today, off and on. And I think somehow in my heart that maybe it was like he was crying a little bit because though he was, it will be 50 years tomorrow that he was assassinated. 
I think that um, we have not been behaving properly. I know people can only remember things like, oh, well, you know, little black girls and little white boys will be able to hold hands. And that's all well and good, you know, but we as a black people where we've come for these people who've laid their lives on the line for us, like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and, you know, people like that, even including, you know, maybe even the Kennedys, you know, I mean, good people are always assassinated for some reason. And we now have a person in the um, White House who people, he's making everybody nuts. Uh, to me, I think it's just a, um, a deterrence from what's really going on with um, in our cities, our large cities, like, um, you know, gentrification, uh, where black people, particularly black Americans are being uh, run out of town uh, because they can't afford to live in the places because they're we're not getting the jobs. Things haven't really changed that much. Um, putting up a street where you're going to um, a street naming of him where you're barely going to have any people who look like him even living on the street because they're not going to be able to afford to. There's so many buildings and constructions going up in this city and then it's very very difficult to even afford the rent. Um, and it's done purposely and it's done maliciously. And, you know, my thing is I've never seen anything happen to people when they purposely try to do something that's evil. And even my own people who look like me, who are in positions to do better. Um, for example, people talk about young people, all oh, the youth, the youth, you know, the millennials, the millennials, you know, where did all these names come from? I guess my daughter and I was talking the other night and, you know, I guess she said it's like King with the baby boomers, you know, I guess after the war, people started, you know, getting together and they had babies, you know, and so the baby boomers went from this time to this time. And then after that, everybody needed to have a, a tag on them. The baby boomers, Generation X, um, you know, the, the millennials, you know, the, I don't know, you know, what difference does it make? The fact of the matter is, is that we all were young at some times and we're all going to be old at, an, at a, some particular time in our lives if we live long enough. But when you look at millennials and you look at what's happening now with the Facebook and the social media and the fact that we're probably not even going to have a physical war anymore, sometimes, you know, when that goes out, it's going to be all, you know, uh, Internet driven. You know, it's going to be all technology you know, where they get in and they take everything, they take your ID, uh, identification, they have more things on TV now about, I, I, um, you know, your identification being stolen. You know, my thing is, um, you know, and then they have a name for people when that sit across the, the aisle or across the table from each other, uh, neffing or something, whatever it's called, where you're just on your phone, you're out to dinner with somebody, you go on a date, but both people have their phones out. They're not even paying any attention to you. So what's the sense in going out with somebody if you're not even going to be able to have a conversation with them? I'm just saying, you know, but the truth of the matter is, is that we're headed down a really strange, strange path. And, you know, um, I think that people who are using political aspirations for uh, Martin Luther King, um, it's terrible because those are not the kinds of people that um, should be in leadership positions. And people want to talk about the young. Well, most human beings' brains haven't even developed until they're probably close to 30 years old. So the people who are there, they say the young, they probably don't even know who Martin Luther King is. And what's really interesting in this city is that they're not interested in black Americans. Um, it seems like everyone that's in office practically, not everyone, but many of the people are from the island, Jamaica, you know, not born in America, um, you know, or if they're born in America, they don't even claim America and they don't even like, really care that much for black Americans. And one of the guys don't even care for women. Like if he can make every black woman that he thinks go against him, to be canned or fired, he'll do it. Um, he's tried it three times, you know, myself included another friend, one of the girls who's in, the sh in my show, and then he even tried it with someone who had worked for a congressman for 20 something years. And it's just sad to see that you have these t type of evil people, de um, you know, demented, um, you know, they don't bring any unity. You know, it's all about them and they want to promote their shows. Oh, we're going to have a gospel show. We're going to have this show. We're going to have that show. Okay, that's fine, you know, but what are you doing for the people to change their lives? And yes, churches and gospel music has been around since 
since they brought us over on the ships, okay, and we adopted the the uh, the religions of the people, the 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 slave masters, you know. But we've all sang and danced and you know and shouted and you know everything, and it's a wonderful thing. But you can have your own relationship with God because God didn't want us to have religion; He wanted us to have relationships with each other, you know. Regardless, you know, we need to be out there supporting each other, and I. I just feel very sad that we have people that are in leadership positions that don't even have a clue what it's about. But if you were never popular or if you want to go back to your country and say, look at what I did in America, I'm living the American dream and those stupid black Americans can't get anything done. If you're like that, then I don't know what's going to happen to you because I've never... Uh, I've never seen anyone in my lifetime not suffer for the, the ills that they've done, if you will. And um, when it happens, when the crap hits the fan, you better get out of the way. You don't want to be anywhere around this mess because it's going to start to fly. And it's really sad because it doesn't have to be that way. We as a people need to support each other. And um, we shouldn't always have some underlying motive for what we do. You know, if things don't come from the heart, like, for example, they spoke. But no one could speak from their heart. They had to have a piece of paper in front of them where they literally had to read a speech. And I get it. Not everybody is so quick to you know, be able to rattle something off. But anything that you know and just paying attention to the outside world and, and just bringing that into um, a, a summary of what you have to say about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the fact that, you know, his name is being placed up on a street here in the city, the fourth largest city in uh, New York State who don't have anything with him. Um, yes, the city has been very, very racist. It still is. You know, uh, they do whatever they can to put their foot on your neck if you stand up. But you know what? These people, Dr. Martin Luther King was very brave. Um, Angela Davis, another one from Birmingham. We know things that maybe other people don't know. And maybe I feel the way that I do because of where I come from. In fact, I know that I do. And so when I see people dividing, being divisive, the millenniums, the, the baby boomers, the elderly, the young, the, it doesn't matter. There are a lot, Dr. Martin Luther King was a young man. We, when we march, were young people. They call the young people the unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. The youngest little boy who went to jail during that time was four years old. So we stood for something. And now we don't even fight for each other. You know, people talk about the, the young people going, and I'm so glad that these young people marched without this gun violence. But there was gun violence when the um, Black Lives Matter. But, you know, it was a whole nother thing. It hasn't changed, people. Don't be hoodwinking bamboozled, as, Mar as Malcolm X would say. Be careful who you choose as your leaders. It's not always coming from their heart. It's just about them getting higher up on that political ladder so that they feel like they can't be touched. Well, you may fool the people, but you're not going to fool God. And that's who you really should be afraid of. Because when he puts his foot down, it's over. <laughs> okay? There ain't nothing anybody can do because he's waited and he's watched. So that's who you need to be trying to impress, not anybody else. I don't care if people try to, but you don't put your foot on other people. If it's for you, you'll have it. And Martin Luther King was about togetherness, you know, and people just being fair. Black schools wanted the same books that the white schools got. We did not want to have to wear whatever was left over from the white schools and uniforms for whether it was cheerleading or, or, or football or anything. The schools got the leftovers. So it was about equality. It was about not having to sit on the back of the bus, but being able to sit where you wanted to sit. It was about the Ku Klux Klan, Aryan race, white supremacists leaving us alone and not raping and killing and hanging. That's what it was about. Civil rights. I think sometimes when people come in here, they don't have a clue what it's about. And today I saw a lot of clueless people 
up there talking about who they thought Martin Luther King was and the stuff that they had read about. And they just put some gibberish. It was, in fact, one of the guys just read something from him talking about the colored people and this, that, and the other. Nothing from the heart. Because he can't feel anything. Can't feel anything but for himself. But this was a good political move. And you got the dimwits out there screaming, yeah, you know, amen, uh-huh, mm-hmm. You got the amen choir. They don't even know who that person is. Because let me tell you, the devil is busy here. And he's in people that they don't even know that he's into. And those people who don't have discerning spirits will never know until it's over. And it will be over. Sooner or later, it will be over. So, anyway. I love Martin Luther King. He was my hero. I love him. I still love him. And the fact that he gave his life to do the right thing and there was some crazy maniac and there's always a whole bunch of crazy maniacs especially when it comes to us so that's why I don't get when um, you know black people call other black people a racist just because you stand up and fight for yourself and I will always fight for myself and if any politician is not willing to say I'm in this I'm willing to die for what I believe for my people then they're just in it for the namesake and just for their own th themselves because when you become a, a political leader, when you become a public servant, you're willing to die for the cause. I guarantee you none of them are. I bet you. Anyway, I've said enough. And 50 years of Dr. Martin Luther King truly been missed. I don't think he would be happy with us today at all. Street namings, it's not going to make black people's lives any better. And it's not going to unify the races, even though people feel like, you know, oh, well, I have a I'm all right. You know, I'm not racist. I got a I got a black boyfriend. OK, if you think that's bringing unity together, if you think that's fair. OK, whatever, whatever anybody's ideas are as far as Martin Luther King, I have a dream, you know. If it's been working, OK, hey, if you like it, I love it. But you know what? All I'm saying is we really need to stop the hatred within our own people because it seems like not only have we separated when he said, I want little black girls and little black boys to be able to come together or whatever. It's like now we got people from, can we get the Jamaicans and the Haitians and the Trinidadians and all of them to come together with the black Americans? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's so much divisiveness that I don't know when and if it will ever go away. At the rate that we're going, by the time the weather gets done with us, with the earthquakes and brush fires and mudslides and, you know, hurricanes and, you know, blizzards and things like that and accidents, I just know that God must be just so sick of all of us. Anyway, I love you all. I'm sorry for the long rambling, but I just had to say something. So, you know, it's been 50 years for him being dead and look at where we are. I'm just saying. So I'm going to go out with um, Undisputed Truth. If you guys remember this song, Smiling Faces, sometimes pretend to be your friends. Be careful who smiles at you. Everybody's not real. And I'm so sorry that people are so lost that they can't even see what's real and what's not real. Show no traces of the evil that lurks within. All right, guys. I'm just saying, like the show, subscribe. Listen to me while you're on the toilet. Whatever you want to do. I really don't care. Anyway, take care. Talk to you soon. And I got proof.